Okay, yes, it's in the mouth. So it's in the student, go touch it Hello, students. My name is go touch it open. The antics to go today. Kitako states much wow. It puts dope hypocrisist. I'm going to teach you about conjugation or how we um, construct sentences. So just like the last few lessons, we're going to focus on conjugation. Let me share my screen. This is Blackfeet language. Okay. So on lesson number four, in this lesson, we're going to learn how to conjugate for VPA. It's understood be VPA. What is VPA? VPA understood be understood It stands for verb, transitive, and animate. So a verb is an action word. And transitive just means that it has a direct object. And animate is living. So essentially, VTA is referring to all the action words that revolve around a living thing that is acting upon something else. Or rather, something acting upon a living thing. Sorry, I misspoke. So example, to love, akomim, to give. Oh God, to know, skseno, and to help, spomo. Akomim is to love, oh God, to give, skseno, to know, and spomo, to help. So let's learn how to conjugate. So for first person singular, which would be I, to third person singular, which would be he, she, they, it, what not. Um, it is pretty simple. You add neat to the beginning, which refers to you, and then wa at the end. And this kind of ending silent wa is making reference to something that is um, basically a singular third person, sort of saying that you're acting on something, the singular third person. And in Blackfeet, there really isn't um, gendered um, pronouns. And so even though I have it as her, it could be him, it could be they, it could be it. Just singular third person, just somebody that is not me or you. It's different. So for instance, if we take the um, word akomim to say I love her or I love him, it would be nitakomimma, nitakomimma, nitakomimma. So you could see how this A comes up at the beginning. And I have this W in quotation marks because it's not always going to come up. In some instances, for instance, when it comes after um, consonant, the W kind of gets um, canceled out. And it's just to help with um, pronunciation. So that's, it's not nitako memwa, it's nitako memma, nitako memma. I love you. I give her as you can see with the T again that W gets erased but if we have a um, verb that doesn't end with the consonant but rather a vowel for instance then you will add W for instance, Nitsksinoa, Nitsksinoa, Nitsksinoa. I know her, Nitsksinoa. And you may be wondering what this um, A is doing here. And it doesn't necessarily have a grammatical purpose. You can just say Nitsksinoa, Nitsksinoa. The only reason that it's there is um, for pronunciation. And it does depend on the dialect and the person. I personally say um, to say I know her or to say I know him. But other speakers may just say And also this wa is very silent and it's not always necessary when it ends with a vowel. So you can just cut off this last part and say to say I know her. But um, again, it all comes down to dialect. In my dialect, it's more um, B 
Pikani. Um, Scopy Pikani. We um, use this a little bit more than, for say, for instance, say Gana or Siksika. But yeah. Nitspumbo. 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 And remember, you're not really using air when you're using this, saying this sound. It's like you're kind of whispering it. You cut off the um, flow from your lungs and you're just using your mouth to say it. So you're not saying it's spomowa, you're saying it's spomowa, whispering it essentially. That would be I help her. It's spomowa. And then for first person singular to third person plural, which would be them, several um, people, the plural of them, it's pretty much the same except an extra wa at the end. So instead of wa, it's like saying wow, ow. For instance, with I love them, and this W isn't necessarily um, needed here. You can sing um, the only reason that it's kind of there is to um, the lack of a better of a better term to like double down that you're um, intending it to say them instead of just the singular person. Because if you just say nitako mimawa, it can be confused for nitako mimma. So nitako mimwa is how you'd say I love them. And what I'm trying to say is even though this W gets cut off a lot with this, with the um, third person singular, it doesn't really get cut off that much with the plural. And that's just to make sure that you, you know you're talking about the plural because it can be confused with the singular. But yeah, to say I give them I know them. I help them. For first person singular to second person singular, um, for instance, me to you, you begin it with git, you add your BTA, and then you add um, kind of a silent oh. For instance, you take the verb akumim to mean love, to say I love you. Kitakumim. 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 So just like the hua is kind of silent, the o is kind of silent. And because of that, a lot of the times it does get cut off to say. For instance, some people don't say kitakumim. They say kitakumim. 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 And some people will add, um, will emphasize this and say but it is more common to just cut it off and just say and sometimes it's not added for instance with the word oh god um to say i give you be and it's still there it's just that it's um Easier to add this oh to this consonant rather than this one, if that makes sense. Get the god. Get sksenna. Get sksenna. Get sksenna. I know you. Get spummo. Get spummo. Get spummo. I help you. And then first person singular to second person plural um, is get. The verb and so similar to this, except you're adding for instance, I love you all would be I give you all and for this one, it doesn't have to be a harsh guttural because I'm not saying it's really just like a puff of air. It 
the guttural doesn't always have to be a ha. It can just be a ha, just, you know, breath of air. I know you all. I help you all. And even though the, um, I'd like to mention the, what's the word, the um, tense is kind of neutral. I help you all. Um, generally, when you don't add a um, tense as in um, present, future, or past, when you're not specifying it, it's going to be assumed that you're talking about the past. So for instance, get does mean I help you all. But since you're not saying will or am or did, um, or the past, sorry, I mean, it's going to be assumed that you're talking about the past. So get can also mean I helped you as in the past tense, as for all of these um, examples. First person plural, the second person singular, which would be us to you. Um, the first as this one, except you're adding oh, bin nan, oh, bin nan, or sometimes just in nan. So for instance, we love you, the kitako mem oh, bin nan, kitako mem oh, bin nan, kitako mem oh, bin nan. But you could also say kitako mem min nan, kitako mem min nan, kitako mem min nan. Um, we give you would be kitako sen nan, kitako sen nan. This up is really um, only there when it ends, when the verb ends with a, um, uh, what's the word? The vowel to aid with pronunciation because it's hard, to, it's kind of hard to say, get knowing on, because that's not really um, how the language works with pronunciation. So that's when this uh, is there and why it's not there with because uh, although you can say it sounds better just to say to say we give you. And although you could say to say we know you, it just sounds awkward. So you take it and then we help you get get And for we love you, it can go either way. or Either way. I personally probably go with or I mean, either one. And then second person singular, first person singular, which would be you to me, beginning with git. Your verb, and then okshp, okshp, okshp. So for instance, um, or I should specify this, K is kind of um, making it so that it's coming back to me, so that I'm the one receiving it. But you love me. Kitako me mokshp, kitako me mokshp, kitako me mokshp. You give me. You know me. Um, you know you help me. Get Get And for these ishpa, what I'm really saying is oak and then ishpa, kind of. Okshpa. Okshpa. And if you need to, if you can't make that sound, then you could use an S to, for instance, say oaksp, oaksp, oaksp. But yeah. And the reason that this is instead of this T kind of gets cut out because the ending T in is um, kind of signifying that the action is going out. But when this K is in there, it's signifying that the action is coming in. So it's saying that I'm receiving the action rather than giving it. If that makes sense. 
I'll show you what I mean. Second person plural, first person, which would be you guys to me. It's pretty much the same, except you're adding a wow at the end. And as you see, this wow tends to come up a lot when we're talking about plurals. Um, for instance, you, just saying you would be gistu, but saying like you guys um, would be gistu wow. And it's just like, um, I love you versus I love you guys would be kitakomim versus kitakomim wow. So yeah, generally um, with black feet, a lot of the times the um, plural is going to kind of be a wow. In some cases, um, not always. But yeah, kitakomim wow. Kitakomim wow. You love, you guys love me. You guys give me tongue twister. You all know me. You all help me. So again, kind of just say gish, gish, gish Second person singular to third person singular, which is you to somebody else. Um, I just for the sake of continuity, I just used her, but it could be him or them. And you do, sorry. You started with git, your verb, and then wa, the silent wa. So for instance, you love her, kitako mimma, kitako mimma, kitako mimma. You give her, you know her, it's Xenoa, it's Xenoa, it's Xenoa. You help her, it's Spomo, it's Spomo, it's Spomo. And this wa is kind of more prominent in this particular um, conjugation format, just so that it doesn't get confused with me to you. Because if you just say, get spummo, then that would more so mean I help you. Or it can be confused to mean I help you, sorry. <clears throat> For third person singular to first person singular, which is uh, him to me. Again, we have this oak, this oak, which kind of means um, that it's coming back. Okay? So for instance, she loves me. She gives me And as you can see, it's not because um, that T would be saying that the um, giving is coming from me um, to somebody else. But when it has decay, it's saying that I'm, I'm receiving the giving, if that makes sense. She gives me. She knows me. And she helps me. And again, this can also be the past tense. can also mean she helped me. Okay. And then third person, sorry, I messed up on this. Third person singular to first person plural which would be um, someone to us is, hmm, I just realized I didn't change it, but it should be okinan, okinan. For instance, nidako memo okinan, nidako memo okinan, nidako memo okinan. So as you can see, it's the same beginning part, except you're adding inan, which generally refers to us. It makes it the plural for the first person. For instance, um, you could say nistunun or nistunan to say us versus just nistu. Or for instance, as we've seen in the other format, um, which would be we give you versus to just be I give you. Hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, she loves us. 
Nitoko memo kenan. She gives us Nitoko kenan. Nitoko kenan. Nitoko kenan. And even though this O is here, um, generally in pronunciation, it's pronounced as if it wasn't there. So you're not saying Nitoko kenan, which just kind of sounds wordy. Um, it's like you're jumping from this T to this um, guttural, just to say nitko kenna, nitko kenna. She knows us, nitsksino kenna, nitsksino kenna, nitsksino kenna. She helps us, nitspomo kenna, nitspomo kenna, nitspomo kenna. Third person singular, the second person singular would be um, Somebody else to you. Started with gate, verb, and then oak, for instance. Kitako memok. Kitako memok. Kitako memok. She loves you. She gives you. Kitokok. 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 She knows you. It's ksenok. It's ksenok. It's ksenok. She helps you. It's pomok. It's pomok. It's pomok. So as you can see, this K is just saying that you are the one receiving the love, the gifting, the knowing, and the helping. And then third person singular to the third person singular. So him to him, her to him, whatnot, him to her, her to him is um, or sorry, she to him would just be the verb and then this e and then this y -E is not necessarily pronounced as we've seen in other um, formats it's the the silent y -E, y -E. so for instance she i messed up again i'm so sorry it wouldn't be she loves you it'd be she loves him or she loves her she gives him she knows him she helps him, or she helps her, she knows her, she gets her. Um, would be akkomimmi, 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 she loves her. Okkotsi, 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 she gets her. And just to pronounce it with the, the silent, you could say akkomimmi wai, akkomimmi wai, akkomimmi wai, akkotsi wai. She knows you. And then she helps you. She, oh, sorry, she knows her. She helps her. Um, as you can notice, even though the verb is this I, it's kind of added. And how could that be if there's you know, nothing beginning in it? Again, it isn't a grammatical um, rule. You don't have to add this I. It just kind of gets added in there for pronunciation. Because even if it wasn't there, I mean, it's kind of there regardless. Versus isn't really much of a difference. So this, this I getting added Again, isn't grammatically needed, it's just pronunciation. All right, well, that was the lesson. I'll see you all again.